Hi, welcome to my blog. My name is Tom Shu, and today we're going to be working with smart filters and, and particularly smart objects with smart filters. I'm always working inside Lightroom. Even if I'm going to be editing files inside Photoshop, I'm going to start in Lightroom and I'll end in Lightroom. So any adjustments I make will be to my files and my catalog of images inside Lightroom because it's my archive for everything. So when you're going to be working inside Photoshop, you want to set up some export presets. And how you do that is when you edit and go to Preferences, it'll pull up your external handling. And you see that I've recommended in the past that you guys only use sRGB, and I still recommend that unless you're printing at home on your own inkjet printer. Okay, most labs, they still use um, light and silver paper, and they project light onto the paper so it's going to be used srgb color space however when you're working with inkjet printers the gamut is a lot wider so you can get away with pro photo i was working 16 bit however sometimes when i'm working with uh, web files like this particular preset if i come here to my web output it says it's going to send it to photoshop as a jpeg in srgb with 8 bits and 72 bits of resolution so I'd have different presets for everything. And one of the presets I have is going to be a smart object, the PSD, which is the native file format that houses all of the layers when you work in Photoshop. So I use that a lot. And when you select your preset, it's going to have whatever you had the bit depth set to before, because this is an editor. And until you save it and you click Save Current Settings as a new preset, it's just going to use whatever is set in these drop down boxes until you change them. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to cancel this. And when you want to use those external presets, they're pretty simple. You right click and edit in. Instead of just saying Photoshop, what you want to do is use one of the presets. So if I was going to use one of the web documents, I would preset it here and that would give me my sRGB color space, 72 dpi, and send it out as a JPEG. However, I don't. I want to create a PSD file. And we're going to be working with smart objects. So I made a preset, and this is the one we'll use. So I'll export that into Photoshop. And there's our document. So it hands it off pretty fast. And the benefit of working with a smart object is if you do any type of transformation or you resize the actual image, it will not lose detail. And I'll show you what I mean real quick. First we'll make a selection, we'll grab our marquee tool and we'll just say select these berries right here and we're going to hit control C or command C on a Mac and that will copy it or you can do edit copy which is control C on Windows okay, let me, oop, I hit the wrong button so we're going to do file new or you can hit control N or command N on a um, on a Mac, so we're just going to do a 72 DPI real quick and let's just change this to 8 bits so the file is really small. Okay. So not created a new document. So we're going to hit Control or Command V. V, that's to paste. Or you can click Edit, Paste. Okay. And that will just put it in your new document. So what happens if we try to transform this or make this smaller? So you see the berries. Let's put them at 100%. We'll just zoom in. Zoom in again. Okay. So there's our berries. Okay, you see there's pretty good detail in those little berries. Okay, so let's zoom back out. And you can resize the whole interface by hitting your control key or command key on a Mac and the minus symbol. And it will do that. And the plus symbol will increase the whole interface. Okay, in steps 10% at a time. So let's go ahead and hit control T. Before I do that, I'm going to hit control D to deselect. Just hit enter to save it. I'm going to do a control J. I'm going to duplicate that layer and you can do that by right clicking duplicating the layer because I want to have a copy that's fresh to work with. So we'll hide this one below. And we're going to do our control T or command T to free transform. And I'll hold the shift key just to constrain everything and I'll resize it. Okay, So I hit enter. Oh. Control Z. Let's do that again. Free transform. I'll unclick, I'll hit enter, and now it's resampled everything down to a smaller size. So it's thrown a lot of information away. Let's zoom in and look at the strawberries, you or the black, the blackberries. And at 500%, you can see that's really jaggy. 
You see that? It's stair stepped everywhere. Well, that's because it's taken that JPEG, that 8 bit JPEG image, and it shoved it down to small size and it threw all the information away. So let's bring the interface to a, a place where we can see it. Grab our hand tool. Okay. And let's do the same thing except try to bring it back to where it was. So we hit Control T to free transform. That's Command T on the Mac. Holding the Shift key, we'll just bring it back up. And holding the Shift key constrains the ratio. And we hit Enter. And you see the berries don't look anything like they did before. These were the berries. Before we downsampled them by downsizing them, it downsamples and throws the information away just to maintain that smaller size. So, if you work with a smart object, so we're just going to go ahead and get rid of that layer altogether. We'll just throw it in the trash. One of the benefits of working with smart objects is you can resize them. Okay? So, what we'll do, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can type filter, convert for small f smart filters right here. Or you can click on the layer, right click, and convert to smart filters. Let me come over here and reselect convert to smart filter and you see it gets a little icon right here so we'll do the same thing control T to free transform let's command T on the Mac and we'll bring it down to this corner that we were before I don't know why I keep letting go of the button control Z control T to bring it back down let's resize it again shift key if you let go of the shift key first it's gonna do what it did before and let's zoom in so you wanna let go of the uh, the mouse before you get rid of it. So you see we're at 500 percent. It is jaggy. Okay, no problem. So let's bring our interface back to where we can see everything again. And we're going to hit Control T again. And we're going to hold the Shift key. And we're going to bring it back up to where it was before. And you hit Enter, and voila, the berries still maintain all of the information they had before. Reviewing them at 100 percent, and it didn't throw any of the data away. So that's wonderful. Well, smart objects, when you use them with smart filters, is even better than just retaining the size information or the information of the uh, picture itself. So let's close this. No, we don't want to save it, and we don't want to make another selection. So we'll start off by hitting Control-J or Command-J to duplicate the layer. And let's go in and uh, let's convert this to black and white. I like working with black and whites. So select... I'm sorry, filter, and then we're going to go to Nick Software Silver Effects Pro 2. Okay, great. So now what we have here is we have our berries on the plate, and let's just apply the neutral preset to them, and we can start making some adjustments. I'll just be quick about this. Uh, these filters, they're just like glass filters in film days. Uh, the way that works real quick is if, say, I chose the red, there's a primary in a secondary color just like on the color wheels that we talked about before so if you look on the red the opposite of red would be on the other side of the color wheel so it would darken one side and lighten its secondary color and the same with any of these other filters so it works exactly the same way as it would on any other glass filter so say if we wanted to adjust this background we could grab the hue and the red would affect you know whatever color this was by based on adjusting this hue so we can darken certain colors down this little line in the middle is saying this was the file before this is after so I'm just gonna slide this over so I can look at the whole thing okay so it's darkened everything down real well and say I want to add a film type to it maybe this AGFA 400 okay so there's our AGFA and maybe I want to tone it back in the film days there was certain toners you could add gold toners or selenium into the actual paper and it would dye the paper a certain color that you could have these neat colors well it didn't just dye the paper it dyed the silver emulsion that was on the film so that means the dark areas which had most of the silver on the paper would absorb more of the toner and then certain paper and toners would instead of the white showing through where there wasn't any silver you'd see the color of the paper so with Silver Effects Pro, you have these same functions. So if we wanted the white area that's going to come through to be a certain color, say we wanted it to be a blue tone or whatever, we could adjust that tone. But let's first let's grab a color tone. And there's copper and gold. 
I like more of the platinum looks, but the sepia is nice too. That's a pretty nice color. So if you deal with the paper toning, these are going to be all the whites that would show through the film. And if you do the silver toning, this would be all of the darker areas of the film where the silver emulsion was. So say if we did like this to like a green cast to it. And let's get rid of our paper toning. I don't want to do any paper toning. Maybe I don't want quite that much of a green cast. Okay, so now we've done quite a few changes to this image, whether you like it or not. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to burn down this highlight. Whenever you have a highlight image, it kind of brings your eye there. My eye is going right to the top there. So one of the cool features inside here is to be able to burn an edge. Vignettes are kind of cool. However, burning and dodging is where it's at for selective control. So let's go ahead and look at this. Here's the strength of the burn. You can see it get really dark there. And then I can change the size, like how far down in the image it goes. And then I can change the transition. I'm not going to use that much, but this is kind of like how it fades. Okay, so there's the transition. So I'm going to reduce the size a little bit and drop the strength. And maybe the transition, maybe I'll increase the strength a little. Burn that in. And change the transition to the right kind of feather it in a little bit. Okay, so now my eye doesn't go up there as much. It's still not right, but, you know, it's just for a tutorial as far as I can see. So we're going to go ahead and save this. We'll click OK. Well, one last thing I'll show you here is this zone system down here. This works exactly like it did in the film days. Zero is 100% black and 10 is 100% white without detail. Nine is also white and one is your shadow information. The first zones that have detail are 2 and 8. 8 and have detail. So say if you're working on a monitor like a laptop and you have the brightness turned all the way up, the image might look right on the monitor, but it might be way blown out. And there might not be any information at all in those shadow details. So if we look at the shadow, I can tell that my berries have details in the shadow because I know it's going to print out in zone 2 in the blacks. And in the highlight area in zone 8, I know that there's detail in this little tray here. Okay, so if everything was over here in this side, I would know that if the majority of the image had this little color striking on it, that there would not be any detail at all, and that's 100% white. And I would adjust my brightness down till it didn't show those color strikes. So anyways, let's hit OK and bring this back into our uh, document. So now we have a new layer on a non-smart object okay this is burned in whatever changes were made to that layer are there forever and there's nothing I can do to go back into Nick uh, color effects to fix it the reason why I showed you this all that work we did is wasted well it's not wasted if I like the way that image looks it's fine okay so I'm just gonna hide this layer Okay, and I'm going to go back in, but I'm going to convert this to a smart object. So we're going to do filter, convert for smart filters. We'll click OK on this layer, and I'll be real quick about it when we go back into Silver Effects. And this is the why you want to work with smart filters and smart objects. Filter, Nick, Silver Effects Pro 2. No, I do not want to update. We're going to start right there on neutral. Let's drag this over. Let's just go straight down into that red filter. Let's grab a film type. Let's do that AGFA 400 again. Let's grab our toning and sepia. And let's burn that edge. We'll burn the top. And the size of it will make it like this much the transition maybe I'll back it off just a hair maybe I'll burn the bottom too so we're going to do strength size and the transition make it softer okay so now my eyes not drawn to the edges as much so we're going to just click OK there and now you see that on this layer these filters are applied so I can go back in and make changes so let's save this file Control S or just file save and that's command S on a Mac save so it's gonna save it and it's gonna hand it back into Lightroom so all of these changes 
are going to live in my catalog and I can revisit a year from now, five years from now, and pull this back up and make adjustments inside Nick Silver Effects Pro 2 or any other plugin that's backwards compatible. So let's let it finish saving it. So it saved it all. Let's open up Lightroom and there's our image. Okay. So say I'm looking at it and I go, well, you know, I don't really like the way that film grain treated these uh, areas here because that's from that AGFA. So we want to do right click. We're going to edit in Photoshop. And it's going to say with adjustments or the original. You want to select the original because we're only adjusting the original PSD that we saved back in the Lightroom. Because if we do it with a Lightroom adjustments, it's not going to give us the ability to work with those PSD layers. So we're going to edit it. Click edit. And it handed it. Let's close this back off. Let's not save it. Let's go back into Lightroom. So I want you to see it open it up itself. Right click. Edit in. Photoshop with the original document. So there's all those layers that were still there. And say if I want to fix that film, I don't want to see this again here, sorry. Okay. Say if I want to fix that film and I don't like the AGFA and I wanted to try maybe this Ilford Pan F50. So we'll click OK. We're going to hit Save. It's going to save that file back into Lightroom. Or, yeah, into Lightroom. However, do you see this layer here? There's no amount of adjustment we could do to fix this inside Silver Effects Pro. So if we just did a normal workflow where we handed a file into Photoshop and then we applied that that filter to it and it wasn't a smart object and it didn't apply a smart filter there's no amount of adjustment I can go back in to fix it easily I have to start all over from scratch with a new file this is the dumb workflow and this is the smart workflow so let's go back into Lightroom and look at our file first of all let's go back into Photoshop and close that layer off so it doesn't look so weird and so they match so there's the same exact file You'll see the grain structure is a little different here from that different film type that we that we selected. Well, thanks for visiting my blog today. My name's Tom Shu, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the blog. And I appreciate you guys coming by today. So until next time, we'll see you soon.